let's see what news we got today. New character customizations for 10.1.7, interesting. Hardcore classic on August 24th, neat. And a triumphant roar echoes from atop the seat of the, oh jeez. Is there anything more annoying than that? I've done it, Jason! There it is. I decided to play a ranged class for RBGs. Wait a minute. A ranged class? I thought you prefer melee. I do, but the time to play it safe is over, Jason. Not only did I pick a ranged class, I'm embracing my inner scaly. Your inner scaly? Oh my god, you don't mean- That's right. I'm playing Dragonflight's new hero class. Behold, my dragon form! Ah! Wait, dragon form? Don't you mean drag there? Dragon, drag there, tomato, tomato. Behold, my dragon form! Ah! That's your Drakthir form? What, 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 what? What's wrong with it? You're not even a dragon, you're a dinosaur. Role playing game, Jason! This is a role playing game, and I have the right to immerse myself as a dragon. And besides, this is all I could afford in the budget. Okay, are you at least preservation spec? The healer spec? Hell no! I'm a dragon, Jason! I bring death! Destruction, and occasionally NSFW deviant art of my dragon OC hooking up with Alex Straza. Wanna see? What? No. Maybe later. But why would you play as a DPS evoker? They're not even the top tier casters. Hey! Don't diss evokers, bro. They're awesome. Come on, man. There are way better spell casters to play. What can a devastation evoker do that a balanced druid or a warlock can <laughs> Holy shit! What's up everyone? Welcome to the RBG Review Show. Yes, I have a name for it now. In this series, I pick a class, I play whatever that class's best in slot DPS spec is for RBGs at the time, and then I review it. And by review it, I mean I go over the roles of the spec, the utility, talents, and more, followed by an epic PvP montage before I give my final assessment. And for this video, we're gonna mainly talk about Devastation Evoker. You might be wondering, but Drew, what about the new augmentation spec? Isn't it better than Devastation? Well, yeah, but there are some nuances. I already said in my last review that I was doing Devastation, and I was in the middle of production for it when it was announced. Also, Augmentation has been going through a lot of tweaking. But even though I'm focusing on Devastation, I'm still gonna go over some of the fundamentals of Augmentation in this video. So I guess you could call this a review and a half. A Devastation review with some Augmentation sprinkled on top. With a side salad of preservation. I never touched the salad. Besides, the playstyles of both Devastation and Augmentation are mostly the same, and they have the same roles in RBGs more or less so regardless of which spec you're interested in, the information's still gonna be valid. Now, because I was new to this class, I thought it'd be best to consult a professional. And who better to ask than Easy Game, who's consistently been among the highest rated dev evokers in RBG's Dragonflight Season 1, and is also proficient in Aug Evoker. I even used his talent build and playstyle as the main blueprint. So, is the new Scaly addition to WoW worth playing in RBG's? Well, only one way to find out. So the Evoker is WoW's first hero class with a ranged DPS spec, but besides being a hero class, what makes it different from the non-hero spellcasters like mages or elemental shamans? Well, one is that it's a pretty mobile spellcaster with abilities such as Hover, which allows you to cast while moving, Verted Embrace, which charges you to an ally, and one of the Evoker's most iconic abilities, Rescue. It lets you manhandle your friends from one point to another, which is pretty fun. You wanna go pick? Alright, fine, yeah. I'll pick it. I don't- Oh god! Hey, run, run, run. I'm running, I'm running, I'm running! For your life. <sighs> Let's go, Vardor! <sighs> Please. Please. I rescued you! You're welcome! Well, how do I feel? 
touches the ages are just because I care, damn it! With it, you can whisk your friends away from danger, help your FC across the map, and you can even combine it with Verd and Embrace to cover more ground. You also got Blessing of the Bronze, which reduces everyone's major movement speed cooldown, Time Spiral, which gives everyone an extra movement spell use, and you have Empowered Spells that you can charge up to full for maximum effect or release prematurely for a reduced effect. But what else separates Evokers from typical spellcasters? Well, their range, or lack thereof. You see, most damaging spells from range DPS are 40 yards, but most damaging spells from Evokers are only 25 yards. Ooh, that's kind of small. Which, I guess as someone who plays mostly melee classes, it's not that weird for me to get up close to people, but Evokers aren't exactly tanky. I feel like I'm made of paper when I play this class. If you don't use your defensives preemptively, you're just dead. But it's supposed to make up for the squishiness and lack of range by being very mobile and putting out a lot of damage. Key phrase, supposed to. Arguably, the most iconic spell evokers have is Deep Breath. I love casting this ability, probably because of my Game of Thrones fantasy of Amelia Clark riding me. You know, because I'm a dragon. I'm also talking about sex. Usually paired with Landslide, which roots everyone in a path, Deep Breath has you fly to a target location while damaging and stunning enemies in your path. Dracarys, bitches! It's a neat disruptive tool, but Deep Breath has two weaknesses. One is that it's highly telegraphed with its animation, which makes it easier for the enemy to notice it and counter with things like FUCKING REVIVAL! And the other is the good old no path available error. Oh, jeez. Sometimes if there's a slight incline or a random object in the way, which battlegrounds are full of, you get a no path available error, which prevents your cast. There have been times when Deep Breath would have scored a kill or spun a base had the cast gone off initially, but instead, I end up wasting like three GCDs standing there like a mook doing nothing. Wait a minute, why can't I Deep Breath here? Is it the bush? Is the bush stopping me? I'm a dragon! How do I lose to a bush? It doesn't happen all the time, but when it does, I want to punch my computer screen. The only crowd control you have besides Landslide and Deep Breath is Sleepwalk, which can help you score a kill or prevent damage, assuming nobody breaks it. And fun fact, Drakthir have this racial ability called Chosen Identity, which puts you into your visage form when you're not in combat. The reason you want this turned on is because being in your visage form increases out-of-combat health regen for you and nearby allies. It's a little niche, but it can make a difference, so if you want a min-max, turn it on. The only real drawback is that you're going to look ridiculous when you glide. Speaking of which, you can glide, which not only lets you take advantage of some battleground terrain, but it can also save you from getting knocked. EAT MY ASS, MISTWEAVERS! Track there also have Tail Swipe, which I don't find myself using very often, but it's something to stop a cast instead of your kick if they happen to be in range. And they have a knockback with Wing Buffet. It's not as good as Monk or Druid knocks, but I still manage to make use of it when I can. <laughs> The next set of utility depends on your specialization. Devastation Evoker does not have a lot of buttons. It's like the BFA Demon Hunter spec of ranged classes. What was that about this being an advanced class? You basically blow shit up with Shattering Star, Eternity Surge, Fire Breath, and Spam Disintegrate, which is this vomit laser Kamehameha and... You're basically a kaiju. What's that not to like? And that's pretty much it for Devastation. So, Evoker started off with only two specs, but when Blizzard heard I was in the middle of making a review video for Devastation, they said, Hey, you know what we should do? We should fuck with Drew by giving Evokers a third spec! Between this and Ray's Abomination being removed, I can't help but feel personally attacked. So what's Augmentation about? Well, it's Blizzard's first official support spec, which is funny to me because if you saw my Unholy DK review, I said that DKs feel like a support class. I think the intention Blizzard had for these two specs is that Devastation is supposed to output more damage on its own, while Augmentation is supposed to rely on its teammates to get the most value out of it. In other words, Augmentation is not supposed to do as much solo damage as Dev, but it compensates for it by buffing the damage and survivability of its teammates and providing other unique support skills. One of their main abilities is Ebon Might, which buffs the Evoker's damage and their allies. To name a few others, there's Blistering Scales, which is a damaging shield, Draconic Attunements, which is an aura that increases either health or movement speed, and Wormstone, which can be pretty crazy on flag maps. Because of the closest Clutchmate's passive ability, Augmentation's two main abilities, Ebon Might and Breath of Eons, which replaces Deep Breath, are not as effective in raid groups as they are in five-man groups. Hence why Augmentation has been really popular in arenas, but not so much in RBGs. So yeah, Augmentation has more utility than Devastation, but the question is, is it worth it? Would you rather have all these support skills, or would you rather pump out more damage as dev? I think the answer to that question is going to come down to how Blizzard balances the solo damage output of dev versus the utility and support skill potency of augmentation in whatever patch we're in. And which one's better to play may even depend on your comp. 
Augmentation, I think, actually probably has more of a place in RPGs right now than dev. I don't think it's meta either, but I do think that there's certain team comps where, and certain maps, where a good augment can, like, change the tide of a game. If you have like really strong DPS players that are getting buffed up, it's it's overwhelming for the enemy team. Like the damage that it gives like warriors and DKs and rets. Augment works really good with melee. It doesn't work that good with casters. It, it can work, but ideally you want to have like a three, two or three melee heavy comp and just the Augment Evoker frontlining with the melee buffing them up and it, it can just run over teams. At the time I'm putting this video together, it looks like Augmentation is pulling ahead of dev and RBGs and is the preferred spec between the two. But play Playing dev would probably be better than playing augmentation in situations where the rest of your team's damage sucks, since augmentation is only as good as their teammates. And last, but certainly not least, we got Preservation Evoker, which, since Dragonflight's release, has been one of the best healing classes to bring in RBGs, being outclassed only by Mistweavers. If you want to get the most invites, then technically this is the spec you should be playing. But fuck that, my inner sociopath wants to live out my kaiju fantasy, and that's what we're focusing on, damn it! So let's take a look at the talents. For the main talent tree, I don't really move much around. I tried a pressing roar, but it always felt clunky trying to use it for my abilities. I think it's only worth running if you're using it in tandem with someone else's crowd control setup like a Demon Hunter AoE stun. Other than that, I'd rather put that point into either Draconic Legacy or maybe Walloping Blow for Eye of the Storm. The Devastation talent tree doesn't really change either. I've seen some people spec into Charged Blast, which might be good with specific setups, but I prefer the single target damage. In fact, the only time I ever push Pyre is if I'm spinning a base with a lot of people trying to cap it at once and I'm locked out of other non-red magic schools. For PvP talents, I use Unburdened Flight all the time. My second choice is Nullifying Shroud. But at the start of Season 2, I experimented with the newly added Divide and Conquer talent and... Oh boy. If you read the tooltip, it's supposed to make your deep breath leave behind firewalls that block enemy LOS and damage enemies who run through them. So your deep breath is basically a one minute smoke bomb that damages and stuns. That sounds really good, right? But what the tooltip doesn't tell you is that the firewalls block the LOS of your allies too. So you end up hurting your own team as much as the other team. And apparently the firewalls don't even cause damage since they don't show up on the damage meters when people run through them. Choke on your lies! <laughs> Unless your team has a specific coordinated strat around it, I don't recommend using it. You're just gonna piss off your own team. I don't know if Blizzard intended this talent to work like it currently does, but if it were to ever function the way the tooltip says it's supposed to, that alone could push evokers way up on the tier list. But because it doesn't, I'd rather stick with Nullifying Shroud. The last talent depends on the map. If it's not a flag carry map, I go with Scurring Flame. Scouring Flame? Scurring Flame? Am I pronouncing that right? Probably not. Most people pick Obsidian Metal, which is not a bad choice at all, but I've been using Scurring Flame because that's what Easy Game uses, and I think all the dispels I get out of it makes it more valuable. Especially in Silver Shard Mines and Eye of the Storm. Now, if it's a flag map, I go with either Scurring Flame or Chrono Loop, which returns the enemy to its previous health and location after five seconds. It's basically a mage's altar time, except it's on the enemy. And let me tell you, there is nothing more satisfying than watching an EFC waste their movement CDs right after hitting them with a Chrono Loop. It can, however, be dispelled, which activates the effect prematurely. Chrono Loop used to be an auto-pick for me in lower games, but after talking with Easy Game and playing more with it, I realized that in higher-rated games, I'd get more value out of the Scurring Flame dispels against Guardian Druid and Blood DKFCs, but Chrono Loop can still be useful against Vengeance DHs since they tend to kite more often. Swoop Up is an honorary mention. Generally, I don't think it's worth running as dev, but it's ridiculous with augmentation. Easy Game recently found out that augmentation can combine Swoop Up with Spatial Paradox, which can move an enemy over a ridiculous distance. It's pretty crazy for flag maps, and you can even knock people to their deaths in EOTs all on your own. I even put together a short montage of it on Easy Game's channel, which you should check out if you haven't already. The stat priority for Devastation is Verse, Mastery, Haste, then Crit. These are my gear pieces and enchants. I'm using the PvP main hand weapon, but the best weapon to use if you can get it is the Legendary Evoker weapon. You know, the one from the quest item that randomly drops from the final boss in Aberus that puts you on a quest chain to gather materials that cost over 400k gold to craft, and every time someone gets it, no matter where you are in the game, you get spammed the same message as a constant reminder that you don't have it. Blizzard, if you could please have the best PvP gear come from PvP content and not from raids and dungeons, that would be fantastic. Anyway, these are the two crafted embellished items I'm using. But Easy Game mentioned that the Spore Cloak and Zone of Focus pieces are also really good. As for the macros I use, aside from focus macros, I only have three. 
this one that casts Living Flame as a heal on myself, Dragon Rage plus Trinket, and Tip the Scales plus Fire Breath. What Tip the Scales does is it makes your next Empowered spell cast instant and at max level. You can make a Tip the Scales macro for Eternity Surge if you want, but I almost always cast Eternity Surge at level 1 because the levels don't increase the damage, it just increases the number of targets hit. Now onto the damage rotation. The standard rotation is basically Fire Breath, preferably at max level because it's more instant damage and more dispels if you're using Scurrying Flame, then Shattering Star, then level 1 Eternity Surge, then as many Disintegrates as you can get off, and then spam Ozzer Strike until you get a proc for a free Disintegrate, and use Living Flame whenever the instant cast is procced. I never hard cast Living Flame unless I'm healing myself or someone else. And make sure you use Unravel whenever you can. If you see it light up, just press it. For the burst rotation, it's a good idea to use Nullifying Shroud before you use your burst. First, Landslide into Deep Breath, and port back if you need to, which is usually the case. Then Dragon Rage Trinket macro, then Shattering Star, then Level 1 Eternity Surge, then the Tip the Scales Fire Breath macro, then use as many Disintegrates as you can, or cast Living Flame if you have the instant proc. If you don't have Disintegrate or Living Flame proc'd, spam Azure Strike until you can cast Disintegrate or Instant proc Living Flame again. So what's a Devastation Evoker supposed to do in RBGs? Well, they're mainly team fighters who disrupt the enemy team with Deep Breath, rescue their teammates, and blow shit up. It's pretty straightforward. For domination maps, you're mainly a team fighter, but because of your mobility, you may end up being the first one to peel out of a team fight if one of your bases needs help and there's no other class that can peel out. Usually druids and demon hunters would be assigned to peel out before you because they're better suited for it. Oh, and here's a fun fact. Evokers are the worst base sitters in the game, so you should never ever solo sit a base as an evoker. They can't stand far from the node because of their range, and outside of nullifying shroud, they're basically a sitting duck. And disintegrate doesn't spin because the whole cast counts as a dot. Yeah, this giant laser Kamehameha does not spin. Go figure. For flag maps, this is where I have the most fun playing an evoker. You mainly play offense, but you're going to get a lot of mileage out of rescue whether you and a friend are chasing down a target or you're helping your FC across the map. And as I said before, you may want Chrono Loop if the enemy FC is a Vengeance DH. For Eye of the Storm, pretty much the same as Domination maps, just stick with the team fight, and you might be the first to peel out if one of your bases needs help. Unless there's a Druid or a Demon Hunter who can peel out instead. And if you're lucky, you might even get some Noxin with Wing Buffet. And then we have Temple of Kotmogu. It's a mobile map, and Invoker's a mobile class, but holy shit do I feel that 25-yard spell range while also being made of paper. And because of that, Evoker's not the best orb carrier. It would probably be third or fourth for orb carrying Pryo. For Silver Shard Mines, again, you're a team fighter and you're not really good for off cards. You're probably going to spend most of your time in Lava, so go in, Jakaris, and have a good time. And finally, Seething Shore is still gone. It's been two and a half years. Do I hear three, Blizzard? And now it's time to go over the best races. You might be saying, Drew, what are you talking about? Evokers can only be one race. Well, that is where you are mistaken, my friend. These DeviantArt monstrosities came with 15 different scale colors and 11 secondary colors, giving them as much customizable variation as the hair color of a women's studies professor in a community college. And I like to think the scale colors are representing the dragon flights. Blue and red are easily A tier. Black is an automatic S tier because it has the most Riz, especially now that the Black Dragonflight is led by Giga Chad Abyssian instead of bitch ass Rathian. Green Track Theory are kind of lame because green dragons usually sleep all day, and bronze is the worst because it's the bronze Dragonflight's fault we had Warlords of Draenor. Every other color is mid tier, I guess. So before I give my final thoughts, I think it's time for Kaido the Evoker to challenge the world to a battle. Dr. Octagon, I'll post- 
If at first you don't succeed, blast them with your blue eyes again! Another one. Another one. Another one. And another one. Bye, bitch! I trickle my Evoker. So, what do I think about Evoker? It's fun, but also frustrating. Mainly because of the deep breath, no path available errors, and the fact that I'm made of paper and have very little range. Whether you're playing Devastation or Augmentation, you're still considered a filler DPS, meaning that classes like Boomy and Warlock are most likely going to get invites over you and you'll be competing with other filler DPS like mages and red pallies for those spots. And you'll probably lose those spots unless devastation damage is absolutely cracked or if augmentation utility proves useful enough in RBGs. It's a fun ult to play, but I don't recommend maining it unless you really, really like it. But that could change if Divide and Conquer ever works the way the tooltip says it's supposed to. I think that rework alone would make DPS Evokers the new meta. But if you're willing to play as Preservation, you should have a much easier time getting invites. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you in the next review. So what class are we going to look at next? Uh, I don't know. I was thinking maybe a warlock or a shaman. Hello, you! It is I, Andalor the Paladin!